having looked at how to build Taylor polynomials with formulas, there's an obvious question that most students ask going, why would we do that? We, we have a perfectly good function like y equals e to the x. Why in the world would we go through the, all the work to approximate it with a quadratic or a cubic when our calculator does this already? It's worth knowing that these approximations do show up in perhaps surprising places. And we'll give you one tidbit example here where it helps with limits, but there are other applications later on in mathematics where surprisingly these approximations come in very handy. So a little bit of faith at this point would be warranted, but let's see how we can use these approximations in a very concrete way to solve problems we weren't able to before. All right, evaluate the limit x is, as x goes to zero of this expression here. Well, what we would get with that is x goes to zero, we get that. And on the top, we get e to the zero minus one. And that would give us overall zero over zero, which is what we'd call indeterminate. In other words, we can't say. Just by getting zero over zero, we could actually get any kinds of numbers. But we're interested mostly in what happens to this function as x gets closer and closer to zero. So one strategy to cancel this and simplify it would be to divide through by x. Well, that worked with polynomials on both top and bottom, but here I've got an exponential and an x, and somehow I can't compare them. I can't cancel anything there. But what we can do is replace the exponential with, let's say it's Taylor polynomial degree two, just to see what happens. And what are we gonna do? We're gonna do that near x equals zero. Of course, we want that one because we want it to get accurate when x is approaching zero. And recall that as x approaches zero, e to the negative two x is actually going to be the same as the polynomial. So we can bring some serious horsepower in here. These are approximations when x is going to be close to zero. But as we get closer and closer and closer, and in the limit, these two things will be the same. They will have the same properties at the point zero. And that'll make it perfect for analyzing limits. Let's take a look. So let's take our function here as the e to the negative 2x. And to generate a polynomial approximation, we need the derivative, negative 2 e to the negative 2x. And let's go down to the second derivative. That should be enough. That'll be 4 e to the negative 2x. We're going to evaluate all of these at x equals 0. And we'll get f of 0 is e to the 0 is 1 f prime of zero is negative two e to the zero, well, that's negative two. And last but not least, four e to the negative two is four. So e to the negative two x can be approximated by the second degree polynomial, Taylor polynomial of one minus two x minus zero. That's our point, we're doing this near x equals zero plus four over two, remember the two in the denominator for the second derivative term. And if we can tidy that up a bit, one minus two x plus two x squared. So e to the negative two x can be approximated by this polynomial. What does that get us? Our original question was a limit. Let's find the limit as x goes to zero of e to the negative 2x minus 1 over x. Well, that's going to be approximately the same as the limit as x goes to 0. And I'm actually going to take this approximation out in a sec because, as I just said earlier, when x is getting closer and closer to 0, these things actually do become equal to one another. So I'll leave that as a separate color, I guess, is best. e to the negative 2x, we can replace by this quadratic then minus one. So we're taking our e to the negative two x, replacing it with its polynomial equivalent or approximation, and everything else stays the same. Ah, what does that let us do though? Now we can cancel these ones, one minus one. So we can simplify and 
and obtain negative 2x plus 2x squared all over x. And because x isn't equal to 0, we can actually go through and cancel 1x on each term in the top, 1x in each term in the bottom, and we will get negative 2 plus 2x. And then we still have the limit as x goes to 0. Now there's no dividing by 0 problem. Originally, when we tried to sub in x equals 0, we had a problem dividing by 0. Now we simply get negative 2. So this is the limit. We could not have cancelled out the x in the denominator without replacing the exponential that we had with some kind of polynomial. But the key thing is, in fact, just the linear term was enough to get something simple. Everything else that we could have added to this would have been higher powers and would still have gone to zero. The important thing after cancellation is the negative 2 that we had here. So we can evaluate this limit by replacing the exponential with a Taylor polynomial. Let's try it again with something like sine of 5x over x. And again, recognizing that we have sine of 0 over 0 when we're approaching 0. That's 0 over 0, which again is indeterminate. So what do we do with that? Well, we could replace sine of 5x with, again, this is a bit of experience, but let's try the quadratic and see what happens, the quadratic approximation. Our function then, the part we're interested in, is to replace just the sine of 5x. We don't want to replace the x, it's going to cancel later. So we take the sine of 5x as our function. We get derivatives. We get second derivatives. And that gives us all the tools we need. We're going to use the value x equals 0. So we get f of 0 is 0. f prime of 0 is 5. Cos of 0 is 1. f double prime of 0 is 0. So our limit, sorry, one last step. We can build these into our Taylor approximation as 0 plus 5 x minus 0 plus 0 x minus 0 squared over 2 if we care as 0 anyway. Then we go to evaluate our limit of sine of 5x over x, which we can't cancel right now. There's nothing in these two things that are commensurate. But what we can do is translate our sine of 5x into its approximation, which if we look at it is simply 5x. That's all that's left. The limit as x goes to 0 of 5x over x, or the limit as x goes to 0 of the number 5, which is just going to be 5. If there's no x's, we don't have to really do the limit. And so this limit of the complicated function sine over x can be computed as 5 exactly using this Taylor polynomial replacement for sine of 5x. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait, I've done this before. Not everyone, but a lot of you will have. And you might be thinking there's another rule we can use. That's called L'Hopital's rule. And you're absolutely correct. It's worth noting that L'Hopital's rule, which I'll cover in the next set of videos, is actually derived or proven by doing this kind of Taylor approximation of complicated functions and showing how the derivatives are related. So if you know L'Hopital's rule, but don't know where it comes from, it comes from this kind of Taylor approximation. So we'll continue that in the next videos.